Define gravitational potential at a point. This is a question about gravitational potential, May, June 10, P42. So let's start off with potential. Uh, it's good to remember the equation for potential energy. Now we call it U or GPE, and that will be equal to M times potential, which is phi. Now potential is this one, phi. So if you rearrange this equation, phi will then be equal to the GPE, gravitational potential energy, needed per unit mass. To do what exactly? Here's when you have to say potential is really the work done per unit mass. Because, you know, divide by mass. So work done per unit mass. Moving. So what are you trying to do? You're trying to move a mass. I say okay, a unit mass from infinity to a point. Infinity to a point. So the first idea is uh, you talk about work done per unit mass. Per unit mass is an important term here that you must include. And to do what? Work done to do what? Move a mass from infinity to a point. That's the A1 mark. So imagine now you are some planet, like you know, planet here. You're infinitely far away. As you bring this object closer and closer, there's some work done. That's gravitational potential. Okay, move on to the graph. So the Earth may be considered to be an isolated sphere of radius r with mass at the center. Why do they say isolated? Because uh, if there are other planets nearby, your they all might affect each other, affect the overall potential. So we assume there's nothing else, just one planet with its own potential and its own field. So then this planet has its gravitational potential with this graph here, given to us. Okay, very good. How to draw? Well, you can say this Earth, and there's a radius. And as you go further and further and further away, you have a potential that is less and less negative. Very good. Okay. So the radius of Earth is given to us is R. By considering the gravitational potential at the Earth's surface only, Determine a value for the mass of the Earth. We need to find potential. Do we use a graph or nah? We might have to use the graph to read some values. So the equation for gravitational potential, I think it's given in the first page of the data formula booklet. You can go check it out. Uh, but if not, try to memorize it. Potential is gm over r. Now, what is the distance? Where are we again? Oh, we draw a planet just now. I forgot. Never mind. We'll draw another planet. So you are here and you are where? At the surface, at this spot here. So this distance, separation distance, is going to be the radius of the Earth. So you could change this to big R. Okay, so now we need to see at the Earth's surface, hmm, how do you find the mass? We need to read from the graph. So let's go and look at the graph. What is the potential at the Earth's surface? Because they say by considering the gravitational potential. 6.4 times 10 to 6, so an R. Okay, my graph is not very clear. So if you have the original pass here, you can go look it up. But at the Earth's surface, that's R, looks like we will have a potential of... Is this in between? Well, my version is quite blurred, but yes, it is in between. It's kind of over here. So this is negative 6.3 at this point at the Earth's surface. Should we include a negative num? Oh, there's a negative sign. We forgot about the negative sign. Negative gm over r. Okay, so we put here negative 6.3. Just 6.3? No power, no prefix? Wait, wait. Oh, there is a prefix. Usually it's a very big order, 10 to the power of something. So be careful. Ah. So this is 6.3 times 10 to the power of 7. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, let's plug in everything else that we know. So gravitational constant will be 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Mass, we don't know. We want to find. Radius of the Earth given to us, 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters. All in all, if you press calculator correctly, you should get 6.045 times 10 to the 24. How many SF should we write? You can kind of see what SF they give. This is 6.4 is 2 SF. The graph is also about 2 SF. So I, I'm, I'm, I'll I'm, stick with 2 SF. 6.0 times 10 to 24. It's okay if you put 3 SF too. Yeah, that's fine. 
So this, if you manage to get, is a final mark 1. Top of my head. If you read from the graph the potential at the surface of the Earth, then that is 1 mark B1. And one equation is if you sub in all the correct values into your GM over R, that's one more mark. So this one is a reading from graph questions. So they're a bit more generous. They allow if you have a certain range of values, because I know it's hard to read the graph. We read in the middle of the graph, right? You see, you read in between. But what if you didn't read? It's okay. You can choose the upper box or the lower box because the answer here allows a range of value 5.95 to 6.14 guess it is times 10 to 24 is okay there we go 6.14 so if you get your answer somewhere in the range you're fine okay let's move on to the next part if you haven't tried this question uh, I encourage you to pause the video and try it out try to think read the question very carefully and then we go through the question together anyway let's go so now you have a meteorite like a chunk of rock, at rest at infinity, very, very, very far away. At infinity, we assume the potential is zero. At rest means initially uh, at rest, okay? So that means the initial velocity, u, is zero. The meteorite then travels from very far away towards the Earth. Is it going to collide? Maybe. Calculate the speed of the meteorite when it is at a distance. So after you travel a certain distance, you reach distance of... 2 are above the Earth's surface. Hey, this is a bit of a trap here. Above the Earth's surface, explain your working. Okay, how do we... What, what is happening here? To, you're at rest at infinity. Let's look at the graph to help us a bit. So, potential. Okay, your planet is somewhere at R. So, I could draw the planet kind of like this. Planet is here. Meteorite is super duper far away. Maybe like here, but much further. Okay, so as your meteorite comes closer, the potential will drop lower and lower. Because it's kind of like you're riding the potential graph. Drop until where? 2R. Ah. Wait, 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 wait. Reread the question a bit. Where will the meteorite stop? 2R above the Earth's surface. Above the Earth's surface. Means if your Earth is here, your Earth already has R. 2R above ah, means like this all. Here to here is 2R. So in total distance from center of planet to your meteorite, there will be 3R distance. Oh, so we need to see what's the potential at 3R. Okay. So 3R would be until this point right here. So your meteorite will travel up to this point, which is a potential of, oh man, this is very small again, negative 2.1. So this is negative 2.1 at this point. Potential. So imagine this shape like rolling down a hill. If you have a hill, you put a ball here, it will roll down, right? The potential is decreasing. That's, good, that's for a fact. Potential. Yeah, let's write it in. Language. Gravitational potential energy is decreasing. Why? Because potential decrease. You're rolling down here, right? But as you roll down the mountain, this ball, it gets faster and faster. So velocity or kinetic energy increase. Related to an increase in velocity as you roll down with a certain speed. Same principle can be applied here. Your meteorite rolling, not exactly rolling, but rolling down the potential slope up until this point. From very far, GPE 0 up till GPE of, uh, sorry, Potential of 2.1. Here, potential is 0. Very far away. So there is a change. What is the change? we got to calculate that. Delta phi. So how do we consider this kind of scenario? Well, if something is moving around in the field, you can say, similar to your AS, that firstly, you are moving faster and faster. So this is a gain in kinetic energy. Or say a change in kinetic energy. That amount is equal to a loss in gravitational potential energy. Or you can say a change. Okay? So now we plug in the values. Change, uh, you get faster and faster. So that's half mv squared minus zero. Let's take the bigger one minus the smaller one. 
change in GPE. Now this one, I would not recommend you use the GMM over what's the thing called R. GM, GMM over R square or R R. This one not recommended. If possible, if there's a graph, use the graph. So the only equation that we know is m times phi. If you feel like, miss, this one is so weird. Hello, you have used this before, but in, you know, uh, GPE equals to MGH. The GH is the potential. Now we just level up to delta phi. So it's the same thing. Use this one. It's easier for you than using the other one. So M times change in potential, which last time we called GH. Now we have G phi. Okay, so let's plug in the change. Half mv squared is all that's left. Initial speed is u. Now this one is... A oh, m and m cancel out. I didn't... Ah, m, m. Don't have to worry about m's anymore. So half v squared equals to... Change in potential. You just take the bigger one minus the smaller one. So the bigger one is 0 minus the smaller one, which is what we read from the graph... What was the thing again? 2.1. Right. You move all the way until 2.1. So that will be negative 2.1. Don't forget this whole thing has a unit times 10 to the 7. Okay, so this is our change in potential. Okay, so now we press calculator. We should get a value of V, which is about 6480 meters per second. Final answer, I recommend you write in standard form. So this can be 6.5 times 10 to the 3. All right. So first things first, if you knew and uh, remember your ASO, if got change in potential, means got change in kinetic, or change in potential energy, change in kinetic. If you wrote this, sen this sentence or show that you knew this idea, that's the first independent mark for you. Then if you knew, oh, half mv squared equals to m5. This one is the second mark, compensatory. If you use it in calculation with numbers, also can. Then the third mark is if you got the change in potential. Okay, this change in potential, which is 2.1. This would be the third mark, read from the graph. And lastly, final answer correct is A1 mark. Lah. So some of you may have forgotten that we actually want to use 3R on the right side and you use R or 2R. If you got, if you use, if used, you use 2R to find from the graph and you got, I think 7.9 times 10 to the 3. Then you maximum, you get 3 marks. So side note, they're a bit generous. They're like, okay, lah, you read from graph correctly. But it's okay. So be careful. Read the question above Earth's surface. Anyway, let's move to the part. Three, the last part. So in practice, in real life, Earth is not isolated because we have a friend called the Moon also orbiting around us. So the initial part of the meteorite is shown and normally if we don't have the Moon, the meteorite will just, you know, travel in a straight line towards the Earth. Suggest two changes to the motion of the meteorite caused by the Moon. So how does the Moon affect this path? Think of it this way. The Earth is pulling the meteorite, right? So we have a meteorite here. The Earth exerts a gravitational force, I guess, in this direction. Pulling it. So the meteorite will come to us. But then, if you introduce a moon, the moon is also pulling it. So the moon maybe will pull uh, a bit smaller force, but it will still exert a gravitational force on the meteorite. So this is by the moon. This one is by the Earth. Okay. So you might guess that uh, actually it might not be a straight line or miss. Maybe it might curve a bit towards the moon. Like that. Possible. So that's one thing we can talk about. We can say that the meteorite may bend away. So bend away from the straight path that it originally was on. Okay. Now let's think about other possibilities. What else do we have? 
maybe we can talk about the velocity. If you have one force pulling you, you have a certain velocity. If you have two force pulling you, wow, you move even faster. So if you have larger force, you know, force is related to mass and acceleration, but this is net force. So you have double the force pulling you. Wow, you have double the acceleration. Bigger velocity. So let's talk about that. So you can say that the speed or acceleration would be greater because there's more force. Do we need to explain? Ah? Oh, no need to explain. Very good. <laughs> would be greater. Okay, you can, I mean, you can essay because larger resultant force, but we don't need to explain that, so it's fine. Okay, so this one, if you got two marks here, this is B1 and B1. The mark scheme is very generous. They accept if you have any other sensible ideas. What does sensible mean? It's really up to the examiner to, to decide, you know. So, risky. So write something that makes sense and you should be okay. So I think that's all for this video, uh, this question. Okay, a good understanding, a uh, test of understanding of how to think of objects that move towards Earth. Why do they get faster and away from Earth? So that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.